Hey guys, how's it going? May the peace of God be with you all. I pray the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in this video. We need him, guys, and uh, we have to do everything for his glory. Hallelujah, out of love. Guys, we are living in a spiritual warfare. Every believer, he is going through a spiritual warfare. And in order to have victory, to stand against the devil, he needs the full armor of God. And in Ephesians 6, Paul speaks about the armor of God. And I'm going to read this uh, paragraph. I'm going to share my thoughts about it. There are six weapons that we need to use. And also there is prayer at the end he mentions. So there are seven. So the full armor of God will make us strong and will give us the victory. Without it, we become weak and vulnerable against the devil. And few Christians, they know about this. That's why they are defeated and they are so much suffering in their spiritual walk. But once you apply it in a correct way in your life, you will see power in your life. Especially when you understand it in a right way and you live it and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. So the Apostle Paul is telling us to be strong, but not out of our own power. To be strong in the Lord and in his power, in the power of his might. And it's a commandment to be strong. When you feel you are weak, remember this commandment to be strong. It's a choice. To always be like self-pity and defeated and weak. No, be strong in the Lord. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is the promise of Jesus Christ. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Verse 11. How to be strong. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Praise the Lord. So we need to put on daily to remember this. The full armor or the whole armor of God. That we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. His strategies. He is, he is planning strategies to destroy us. To discourage us. To make us weak in order not to fulfill the calling. Not to be effective and powerful in the kingdom. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. So our war is not with human beings, it's not with, it's not with people. We are called to love people and to love our enemies, but we are in a war against the devil. There are hierarchy in the spiritual realm. There are principalities, there are powers, there are rulers, rulers of the darkness of this age. And there are spiritual hosts, host armies, it means. Spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Heavenly places, the devil is called the prince of the air. So there is hierarchy, there is a whole army, the kingdom of darkness. And man, if you are not prepared, you're not, you're not going to be able to stand. So we need to obey the word of God. Verse 13. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So once there is an attack, once the devil comes against you, you are prepared. Or in the evil day also in the end times. The Bible says about the devil. He knowing his time is short. He came with a great wrath. So when the devil knows his time is short. To be destroyed. He's full of wrath. And he wants to attack the kingdom of light. He wants to attack the saints. So saints put on the whole armor of God. Having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore. So stand. Having girded your waist with truth. 
So let us gird our waist with truth. Here I believe he means by truth is not the word of God. Like later he, he's going to speak about the word of God, the sword of the spirit. But his truth is to live in the truth, to speak the truth, not to speak lies, not to lie to one another. God hates uh, lies. We should hate lies too. Once we lie, we open a door for the devil to attack us. We become weak. We are not in the will of God anymore. This is the first weapon. So, to gird our waists with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. To put on, it will protect us. The breastplate of righteousness to live a righteous life according to the will of God, not a sinful lifestyle. Once we sin also, we open a door for the devil to attack us. We become vulnerable because we are grieving the spirit. We are uh, we are uh, making quenching the spirit also. This is the second weapon. The third weapon, verse fifteen, verse fifteen. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, uh, now he's talking about putting the shoes. Shod your feet. This verse is a bit ambiguous. There are two possible interpretations. It's to put on the peace that comes by the gospel and uh, so that we can be prepared because the gospel gives us sur peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace with God. But in another way, which I lean more toward it, is to be ready to share the gospel with others, to preach the word in season and out of season this is our calling this is the great commission to fulfill the great commission to make disciples to preach the word to all nations so now we have a purpose we are not bored we don't know what to do waiting when will jesus come no we have a mission to fulfill once the christian when he is word he opens a door for the devil to attack him and he becomes he be, uh, the Christian becomes not satisfied and maybe he will go back to sin. So we need to focus on loving others and fulfilling the Great Commission. Praise the Lord. Uh, so verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. This is so important, guys. The shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So the wicked one is uh, shooting us with fiery darts thoughts ideas lies accusations uh, discouragement dis doubts planting seeds but once we have faith in the word of god we are protected our mind is protected hallelujah he cannot these fiery darts cannot affect us we have a firm faith and how we can grow in faith the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god so read the word of god memorize the word of god truly understand the word of god by seeking the truth and asking god to to explain to you ask and you will receive hallelujah so the shield of faith it's so important guys once you you lose faith and you have doubts you feel you see you feel that you are weak you are confused you are not powerful not useful uh, but we need to keep the faith perseverance Hallelujah. verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation this is also so important it's the helmet of salvation connected to the head the mind it will protect your mind because the battlefield is in the mind and in the heart once you have the helmet you will protect your mind what is this helmet the helmet of salvation to know the salvation of god to understand it that jesus died on the cross and he didn't just die on the cross he died for you he died for your sins i know my friend once he told me he always heard that jesus died on the cross but he never he has never known that he, he Jesus died for his sins and once an evangelist told him that Jesus died for his sins he was shocked wow he died for my sins and now he became an evangelist my friend he became a Christian he, he was born again just by knowing the gospel but also we need to believe this gospel to know that we are saved do you know that you are saved or do you doubt your salvation once you doubt your salvation man you become so weak and vulnerable to the devil. 
You need to trust the promises of God. There are two types of people. Those who think they are saved, but they are not saved because there is no fruit of the Spirit, no fruits of salvation. They, their lives are not changed. They are living like the devil. They don't care about the kingdom. But they have false understanding about God. And there is another type of people, those who are saved, but sometimes they can doubt. Yes, I believe that someone who is saved can sometimes doubt if he the that uh, if he doesn't like he's not truly matured and built up in the faith he's distracted by false teachers they can make him doubt but if he's well grounded on the truth he will not doubt so if you are doubting your salvation i'm gonna ask you have you truly encountered the lord have you heard his voice telling you i have redeemed you i called you by your name you are mine you need to hear these words, man. Once you have this powerful encounter, you will not doubt your salvation. You will believe and you will be truly saved. You are mine, the Lord says. Hallelujah. So the helmet of salvation, I took some time speaking about this because it's so important. And the sword of the Spirit, I'm continue, I continue reading verse 17. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the sword, this is the only weapon that is for, for attack. Once the devil comes attacking us, we need to uh, attack him back by, or defend ourselves also, by the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Jesus, when he was in the wilderness, the devil came to him and he was attacking him, making him, are you truly, if you are truly the Son of God, do this, do that. But Jesus was always answering, quoting scripture. He answered, quoting scripture, the sword of the Spirit. Thou shalt not test the Lord your God, for example, Jesus said. So the devil was also attacking him by the word of God, but he was twisting the word of God. So we don't need, we should not only memorize scripture, but we should also truly understand the scripture in context. Once the, the words of the Bible or verses are taken out of context, they become like the devil twists them and he can destroy us through twisting scripture. But we need to be in context and to truly have the Holy Spirit to know it. And we will have victory, guys, in Jesus' name. So these are the six weapons of the full armor of God. But the last one, the seventh one, it's prayer. Paul says, being watchful to this end, uh, excuse me, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So prayer, prayer, prayer is so important. Do you know what is the difference between a prayer warrior and a lukewarm Christian? A prayer warrior is someone who persevere, perseveres in prayer. Even though sometimes he doesn't feel it, he believes that it's so important and he closes the door of his room and he goes to the secret place, secret closet and he prays to his Father in heaven and he will receive power, he will encounter the Lord, hallelujah. And to pray for the saints here, Paul is saying, to pray for each other because we need prayer. I pray for you guys, please pray for me to be able to continue doing what I'm doing, preaching the word. Hallelujah, and reaching people. Verse 19, and for me, he, he means that to pray for me, that I that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Hallelujah. So pray for boldness, to be bold, not to be afraid of anyone. The fear of man is a trap. The Bible says, but the righteous is bold like a lion. Hallelujah. This is in the Proverbs. But the wicked flees when there is no one chasing. But the righteous is bold like a lion. Hallelujah. So let us pray for each other also to have words from God inspired by the Spirit. Because there is a difference between speaking from intellectually just, without true faith and not from the heart, it becomes just words. It comes from here and it goes out from the other side, the other ear. But once we speak with faith inspired by the Holy Spirit, the words 
cut the hearts and they bring salvation they they change people they open the eyes of the blind because it's inspired by the holy spirit is the power of the holy spirit it's not our our words so hallelujah god bless you all guys be strong in the lord and in the power of his might don't forget to share this video like and subscribe and pray for me guys amen in jesus name